The art of deception is the hallmark of a great player. Sending an opponent the wrong way, even for a split second, can make all the difference. These movements are quick, subtle and instinctive. And today, Tommy will analyze them in precise detail. Well, what we're doing today is we're going to be putting these little reflective markers on different key points in your body. So what you're going to be doing is going out there where we've got these special cameras that emit infrared light that bounce and reflect off these and then are recorded on the computer there. And what that allows us to do is record your movement in three dimensions and reconstruct it and analyse it in detail. <laughs> Tommy will practice the art of deception against Chris Colvin, who plays rugby for Queen's University. You're worried that Chris is going to make you look bad. I am, I know. I'm... Go! So what have we got from that then? So this is you here, this tall person. Your shoulders, I think you're using quite a lot. You're using quite a lot of movement. You're using like a double, triple movement there. And you're actually doing enough to fool him so that he can't stop you. It's interesting to see in this the actual breakdown of what a sidestep you're meant to do. When you see it like this, you can see how it works. As opposed to maybe watching somebody in a pitch, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult. So yeah. I think it is quite interesting. So the deceptive signals are the bits that obviously move quite a lot, try and put to deceive them. Then the honest signals are, that's the hips that can't really move, is it? Yeah, they can't lie, basically. Okay. So if you look at this, it's the extremities hips of the body. Don't lie. <laughs> so basically... Shakira. <laughs> and it's interesting if you look at the all black strip, look at this here, around the hip area, there's actually no visual cues for you to tune in and look there to pick up the information but if you look at these fancy boots they could actually be serving a good purpose in the sense that they could be detracting your attention away from where you should be looking here onto their feet which is a deceptive signal so colorful boots are the way forward colorful boots are the way forward i would say reflectors on our shoulders reflectors well. on your shoulders bright head gear That's virtual reality time Sorry. Now it's time to test Tommy's ability to read deceptive movements. He will try and correctly read the movements of virtual opponents. The players he's up against are actually real French League players recorded and rendered as computer graphics. You're immersed in a virtual rugby pitch. Oh, okay. So you're not going to see any of the surroundings in here. But don't worry, because we're not going to let you run into the wall. But oh. what you'll see is basically a virtual player coming towards okay. you. And they're going to try and sometimes they'll be making deceptive movements, sometimes they won't. Your goal is to stop them, to defend them. OK? okay cool. And what we'll be doing is we'll be measuring how and when you move in response to that player. OK? OK. I can't see any other surroundings, so it's pretty much exactly like you see in a computer screen. So it's quite cool. Okay, now I want you to move your head left and right. <laughs> Up and down. Right, heading into the change room here. <laughs> Just come back. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we'll keep you in the middle. Okay. Okay, ready? Tommy, let's go. Oh, he got me. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> ready? Let's go. Yeah, he'd half beat you there, I think. No chance. <laughs> let's go. OK, step left, step back. So what we do with the virtual reality is we present what we call an egocentric viewpoint, the viewpoint of the player. So what he's seeing is what he would see in the match. It was adjusted to his height, and that's what perception on the pitch is about. It's about what that player sees at that moment in time. Oh, yes. Rip them all and we're gone! <laughs> what we would like to use this for is maybe players who are injured and you bring them in back in gradually so you can keep them sort of match sharp so you can still work on your footwork you can still work on that your timing but you don't have to run the risk of injury that's you that's it okay let's go oh for god's sake right we're done <laughs> oh get that off what wow. work in there it is hot <sighs> so many stuff 100 percent i reckon Okay, Tommy, so we've got your results here. 
Thanks. So what we've been looking at is your response to what you were seeing inside the headset. Okay. So we were looking at the number of correct responses you made. What so we've got here done. in the black line are your teammates. Right. Okay, so that's the average of your teammates. And then in the red line, we've got your scores here. Yeah. Results. <laughs> So overall, 89.37%, not bad. Not bad. Pretty good yeah, for a day's work. Yeah, yeah, so you're doing very well.